Despite how much we already know about black holes, there are things that are still a mystery. For example, these space monsters seem to gain weight even when there's nothing for them to feed on. This realization might shed light on mysterious dark energy, but I'll talk about that a bit later. Most supermassive black holes lie in the centers of their home galaxies. You can probably say that they sit in the gravitational driver's seat. Meanwhile, hundreds of billions of stars, planets, and moons orbit them. Even though black holes are really, really big, physics makes it almost impossible for them to grow. But we've found one of these space wonders that has swollen to really unimaginable proportions. The black hole I'm talking about is Ton 618, and it's a mind-boggling 66 billion solar masses. The thing is so massive that astronomers had to think of a new term to describe it. They came up with an ultra-massive black hole. Imagine gathering all the stars in our home Milky Way galaxy and squishing the matter they're made of into one black hole. And it still won't be enough to create a ton 618. So the question is, how did this ultra-massive black hole turn into such a behemoth? You probably know that black holes are made of matter packed together as densely as possible, to the point where gravity gets so powerful that not even light can escape it. And still, it doesn't mean that black holes are some kind of space predator roaming galaxies and munching on everything they come across. Ton 618 still has a whole galaxy filled with stars and other stuff happily orbiting it without getting pulled inside. What I want to say is that the perception of black holes as giant vacuum cleaners is wrong. In reality, it's incredibly hard to grow a black hole. Try to do it and you'll see. First of all, the material needs to get close enough to be affected by the black hole's gravity. And that's not so easy, considering how vast the universe is and how relatively small in size black holes are. But if something does get close enough, there's no escape. That's true. The force of gravity around the black hole increases dramatically fast. It even creates the effect of spaghettification. When an object gets stretched into thin strands of space pasta due to the influence of gravity. Once spaghettified, the matter then gets pulled into the black hole's orbit and flattened into a swirling and glowing disk of material. Eventually, this matter settles into a nice orbit around the black hole, quite far away from the point of no return, also known as the event horizon. By the way, we can use the event horizon to estimate the size of a black hole. The larger it is, the more massive the black hole you've come across is. Interestingly, getting the matter to cross the event horizon will be the most difficult part if you decide to grow yourself a black hole. You'll need to push the material out of its stable orbit around the black hole and make it fall in. As an example, we can take the Sun and Earth. Despite the star's enormous gravity, our planet doesn't get pulled toward it. And the main reason why the material can cross the event horizon is collision between particles. This way, they gain some energy, which is enough to send them spiraling into the black hole. But what happens afterward? The center of the black hole likely collapses into something called a singularity. That's infinitely dense material crammed into an infinitely tiny point in space. But the main problem here is that singularities are mathematically impossible. That's why some scientists suggest that when this weird stuff happens inside the black hole, its mass gets linked to the expansion of the entire universe. Yep, when it gets weird in space, it gets really weird. Such a coupled black hole is like a rubber band being stretched along with the universe as it expands. And as it stretches, its energy increases. And since mass and energy are proportional, the mass of the black hole increases too. But this new mass creates a pressure that makes the universe expand even more. That's the reason why the universe is expanding faster and faster all the time. But several scientists have suggested that, instead of a singularity, there might be something very different in the heart of the black hole – vacuum energy, which is one form of dark energy. Okay, but what is this dark energy? Everything on Earth and everything people have managed to see in space with the help of telescopes and other instruments is normal matter. It's made up of atoms and molecules and adds up to less than 5% of the universe. Around 27% of the universe is dark matter, and almost three-fourths of the universe is dark energy. 
Astronomers wouldn't even know the thing existed if, several decades ago, they hadn't found out that the expansion of the universe wasn't slowing down. Quite the opposite, it was accelerating. It meant there had to be some enigmatic force counteracting gravity, and it got dubbed dark energy. The European Space Agency's Planck satellite helped astronomers calculate how much dark energy the universe has to contain to explain the way its expansion is constantly speeding up. Scientists have also built models of how many giant stars formed and collapsed into black holes since the beginning of the universe. The conclusion is very exciting. The vacuum energy in these black holes is almost the same as the amount of dark energy that should exist in the universe. The scientists who conducted these experiments don't claim to have found the answer to the mystery of dark energy or to what we could see inside a black hole. But still, their theory is quite plausible. It can be tested with modern computer simulations and new data received from cutting-edge telescopes and other equipment. And now, let's speak a bit about dark matter. <laughs> what it is and what it consists of. Actually, this is another thing that confuses scientists to no end. If dark energy is a force responsible for the expansion of the universe, dark matter is supposed to explain how objects work together. Potential candidates for dark matter vary from strange particles to super dim objects. But even though astronomers can't grasp what exactly dark matter is, they know for sure what it isn't. It is dark, which means we can rule out visible stars and planets. It also can't be dark clouds of normal matter, otherwise scientists would be able to detect it. Dark matter is not antimatter. Astronomers don't see unique gamma rays that appear when antimatter comes in contact with matter. And neither is dark matter gigantic galaxy-sized black holes. There's one theory, though, and it's linked with a hypothetical concept of primordial black holes. Scientists have never got any real proof of their existence, but they think these black holes might be insanely old and quite tiny, by black hole standards, that is. Astronomers believe they could appear several milliseconds after the Big Bang. At that time, stars and galaxies weren't born yet. It means primordial black holes probably witnessed the entire history of the universe. By now, the smallest primordial black holes would have most likely evaporated away but the bigger ones might still be scattered out there in space. Interestingly, these holes might be so small exactly because they popped up right after the Big Bang. The longer it took a black hole to appear, the larger it was. The mass difference between older, smaller, and younger, bigger black holes is incredible. Compare the mass a thousand times greater than our Sun to that of a jelly bean. Yeah, you get it. So, there's this theory that primordial black holes could actually be dark matter. This idea remained unpopular for decades. But recently, scientists have realized there are many more black holes in the universe than they used to think. And it means the theory might actually work. And the vast and still hidden from us population of Big Bang black holes could not only make up, but be dark matter. After all, astronomers haven't discovered a single dark matter particle yet, even after decades of searching. At the same time, some scientists argue that dark matter can't be tons of multi-sized primordial black holes. They would collide far too often for this to work out. So, if you have a problem with all this stuff, just ask your nearest scientist, hey, what's the matter? <laughs>